Uh, hello, Ms. Mernick, Ms. Kapelka, and Ms. Matarana. Thank you for agreeing to the interview. So first, I'd like to ask uh, each of you a bit about your background. I'll start with Ms. Mernick. Um, so what was your maiden name? Oh, my maiden name was Nigro, N-I-G-R-O, Nigro. Uh, and did you grow up in Arlington, or? I did. I grew up in Arlington. There were six kids in my family, and my parents also grew up in Arlington, so we have a long legacy of Nigros in this town. Uh, and what about your family? So your parents lived in Arlington, but like, what about your grandparents? Um, my grandparents, my one grew up in Lawrence, and one grew up in Charlestown. Uh, and then a couple of the others grew up in Arlington. They started a family business, so a lot of Arlington roots. So what elementary uh, school did you attend? I went to Stratton. Uh, so what year did you enter uh, the auto center? Great question. What is, let me check my notes. <laughs> um, 85, 86. So when did you graduate? I uh, graduated high school in 1991. Uh, did you begin in 6th, 7th, 8th? When I went here, it was just 7th and 8th, it was called Audison Junior High, and I did, so 6th grade was still at Stratton back then, and we had 6th grade camp, whereas your generation always had 5th grade camp at the end of elementary school, we had it in 6th. Uh, and what about the grade uh, in the Audison? It was just 8th grade, 7th and 8th. And we always had a Canopy Lake trip, last day of school. Um, so, how did you get to Arlington? Did you walk? Did your parents drive you? I walked, and I lived closer to the Winchester Golf Course side of Arlington, so it was a long walk, and walked most days, most days with a group of friends, mostly friends, until they weren't very nice, but walked with a group of people. <laughs> uh, what about the days uh, on, like, with harsh weather? Like I think, well, I had older, so I'm the fifth of six kids, so I do recall a couple of times with my sis older sisters were home from college or something, they might drive me on a cold day, but I don't, I don't think my parents really cared too much. It was like, nope, you've got feet, they work. <laughs> You're walking. Uh, so, Ms. Kripalko, mm -hmm. what was your maiden name? Um, my maiden name was Devlin, D-E-V-L-I-N. Uh, and did you grow up in Arlington? Or? I did, yes. Um, I lived in North Cambridge until I was three years old. Um, and then my parents bought a house in Arlington and we moved here. Uh, what about the rest of you? So, um, I have an older sister and a younger brother. Um, we all grew up in Arlington. My parents both grew up in North Cambridge. Um, uh, my husband also grew up in Arlington and his family goes back like four generations Arlington. His parents, his grandparents, his great-grandparents. Uh, so did you attend elementary school in Arlington? Or? Um, I did, I went to Pierce. Um, and when I was finishing Pierce, uh, my parents moved to a different house over by the Bishop School. Um, so, but I still went to the Audison. So did you attend Bishop? I didn't, no. I finished at Pierce, and then we moved, and I came to the Audison. Um, but back when I was starting junior high, there were two junior highs, and four elementary schools went to the Audison Junior High, and three elementary schools went to the Gibbs Junior High. So Bishop was one of the elementary schools that went to the Gibbs. But those students, because they lived in the center of the town, they had a choice. So I chose to go to Audison because that's where all my Pierce friends were going. Uh, so what year did you enter the Audison? 1987-88. Um, and then my eighth grade year was 88-89. So I left Audison in 1989. So how old were you at the time? I was, well, my birthday's in June. So I was probably 13, just about to turn 14. Uh, and did you begin in sixth, seventh, or eighth? Seventh, seventh. So Miss Mernick and I were right around the same time. So it was a seventh and eighth grade junior high. We did sixth grade at our elementary schools and then came to the Audison. Did all elementary schools have sixth? They did, K through six. Yep. Um, and what grade were you when you graduated? Um, here eighth. So I was here for seventh and eighth, left here in eighth, and went to the high school 
for 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. And how did you get to Dodson? How did you commute? So I lived really far, um, pretty much in Winchester. So my dad would drive me um, in the morning most days. Uh, so Miss Monara, what was your name? My maiden name is Karis, so K-A-R-R-A-S. And did you grow up in Arlington? Yes, I did. Uh, so what about your parents, your family? Uh, my dad is from Greece. He emigrated, you know, when he was 25. My mom was born here, and we lived in Arlington our entire lives. Uh, so what elementary school did you go to? I also went to Stratton School. Uh, did you and Miss Myrna know each other? I know of her family very well, yes. Uh, so what year did you come to the Odyssey? I came to the, um, the Odyssey in 1978. So you would be how old? So if I was in sixth grade, I would say about 12. Uh, and what age, how old were you when you finally graduated from the Odyssey? Um, probably about 14. So again, the same when I was here, um, it was only 7th and 8th grade. So how did you come to us? Walked. Did you live closer or you? Um, no, we lived, and I lived near the um, Ms. Marinick's family, and we lived oh. up by Stratton, so we had to mm. walk down the hill to get here, but then on the way home, we had to climb the hill. Mm -hmm. So you all lived near Winchester, correct? Uh-huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so now we have some questions about like the nuts and bolts of the building. I'll ask each person one question, but if someone wants to add an answer or has like a different answer, uh, mm -hmm. please chime in. Uh, so, Ms. Mernick, uh when you were a student here, how like big was the building compared to now? Hmm. I guess it was smaller because the whole addition part, I guess, were there two additions put on? I think it was a lot smaller. I think when, my... we, when we were here, um, the bottom part mm -hmm. of the addition was there, so where the blue right. gym is. Yep, and the music um, room. Right, but everything above that was not. Yeah. So where the eighth grade built classes are now. Uh, so has there been any sense of renovations to the building? Yeah, so I remember when you... Um, I think the cafeteria, I've seen some yearbook pictures. That's how I, I knew. There were some uh, pictures of this big circular Over window. Here. Yeah. yeah. So the cafeteria had these really big circular windows that are different. I don't know what this whole building is. I guess that's the music. That's music, yeah. yeah. And then the well, where the seventh and eighth grade hallways are now, that those two floors were added on. Uh, so, Ms. Krapelka, mm -hmm. uh, like, what were grades like at the office? Like getting grades or what grades in the school? Like how did you get guys get report cards? Oh yes. Like mm. how did how did how did you view your grades? So you never saw your grades until mm. you never saw your average grade for the term until the term was over. So you would do an assignment and you would get that assignment back and it would be graded. But there was no such thing as a portal. You could never, you know, see what your average was. You could go see a teacher and ask them, but there wasn't a constant awareness of where your grade was at for the term. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the end of the term, so similar, four terms, and then in, in a year grade at the end, um, at the end of the term you would get a paper report card um, that the grades had been added with a typewriter. Um, and they would type in the class, and it would have the uh, the grade that you got for that um, mm -hmm. for that class. And they were the same letter grades that we have now. Right. A minus, B plus, yeah. C. Do you think? Because, uh, like, do you think the grades were stricter back then? Do you think nowadays kids get more slack with their grades? <laughs> I, I think I think so in some ways. In some ways, maybe not. Uh, the curriculum has changed and maybe gotten a lot more. Um, difficult in some areas so you know um, but I, I do feel like teachers were were strict and held you accountable for your work a little bit more than the COVID times <laughs>
Yeah, I, w I would say it was definitely more strict. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, teachers were more strict, grades were more strict. Um, yeah, and, and actually, I teach eighth grade. The transition from eighth grade to the high school was definitely more strict. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to take an honors level class at the high school, you had to take a test um, and get a certain grade on that test to take honors at the high school where that doesn't happen anymore. Um, so, Miss Matarana, like, how long were the school days? Six, seven hours? I think it was 8 to 2.30, mm -hmm. would you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how many uh, periods were there? That's a good question. Anywhere between six and seven. I, I don't seven, remember. Right? Seven. Is it seven? Seven. Yeah. So I feel like you always had your four, four yeah. subjects mm -hmm. plus a language, phys ed, and a special. Like yeah. A, yeah. That's very similar to what we have now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, Miss Renner, what was the like library? Mm. Oh, it, not. I mean. <laughs> The structure, the layout was very similar to now. Um, I believe the card catalog machine was, was not machine, a unit was right around here. And that's where you would need to go and look through the paper cards using the Dewey Decimal System and find um, the number to write down on a little piece of paper and go search for a book. So it was, um, yeah, card catalog system was pretty much all that we used. I think there may have been a little one computer at some point, right? That you could maybe look up a book with that, like they have with the library. But it was very different. Well, and remember, this was open. Remember the open? The open cluster, clusters. right up above. They had, they had what was called an open cluster where there were no walls to the classrooms. So um, in these, these classrooms up here, it was mm -hmm. just like, it was completely open over into the, into the media center. Mm -hmm. And was the hallway? So when you walked in the main lobby, I remember there being a staircase going yeah. up. So the entrance to the media center, instead there was a staircase right there that went up into all these areas that were open. That was the open cluster. Yeah. And then the closed were the ones in where, where our classrooms are now. Where seven the seventh grade is yeah, now. Yeah, where the seventh grade is now. And they were just closed classrooms. Uh, so Ms. Kropelka, I know Ms. Frenick mentioned like a singular computer where you could look up books, but mm -hmm. like nowadays we have the computers but what did you guys have did you have any typewriters or was it just I don't like remember I don't remember using a typewriter but I'm sure they were here somewhere we did have when I was here we had a computer class mm -hmm. it was taught by a man named Roger Neal um, and you would go to computer class like you would go to fax or music um, and learn how to use a computer uh, because it was so new back then um, nobody had their own computers. Very few families had computers at their houses. So you would just come and you would get, have a class where they taught you how to use a computer. And just for context, because I, I remember that class with Mr. Neal too. I don't know what we would have ever done on that computer. So if this was in seventh grade, I remember distinctly seeing the first email ever being sent by one of my professors my freshman year of college. Mm -hmm. So that was being 1991, 92. And it was like a, a lesson, you know, like here I'm hitting, they hit send, and it was sent to somebody in California, and we all just watched. We're like, wow, like, why would you need to do that? <laughs> so, uh, so Ms. Monterano, was there a dress code for um, students? That's a very good question. I don't know. Um, I remember we wore very casual clothes, jeans were huge, Jordache and Levi's, um, mm -hmm. probably sweatshirts. I don't know, do you guys remember? Champion sweatshirts. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Guest jeans, champion Guess sweatshirts. Yeah. Yes. There was definitely a dress, there wasn't, a, there wasn't a uniform, but there was definitely a dress code. Certain things that they didn't mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. want you to wear, but, and we wore a lot of sweatshirts. You know, zipped up or pull over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so, Miss Marnick, what like foreign languages? I I took Spanish. I know. I think there was Spanish, French, Latin, the three that I remember. Was it only those three? I think there so. There was yeah. no Mandarin. No. They didn't have any exploratory uh, options. So, you took your language both years. Uh, and Mr. Pelko, what about 
the cafeteria? Did you eat lunch at school or did you go home to eat lunch? We ate lunch at school. Um, the cafeteria, the structure of the cafeteria was the same, even the way you'd walk in to get lunch. It was the exact same setup. A couple of things that looked different. Um, the wall where the screen is now was an enormous mural, um, which they actually just took down um, a few years ago. And that was the same mural that was here when I went to school here. Um, and the windows were these enormous circular windows. Um, that's the picture in the yearbook Miss Marnick showed. Um, and when they did the renovations um, at the end of the 90s, probably 10 years after I had left here, they removed those windows and put in the this rectangular windows that are in the cafeteria now. Uh, what was the school lunch like? It was very similar. Um, you had options, you know, whereas coming from elementary school, there was one lunch that you could pick each day and pizza was Friday. When, you, when we got here, you had different options each day. Um, even the snack station, like where the snack station is now, is that open? Oh, I don't know. know. Um, but the there. snack, kind of the snack bar, that was in the same place. So if you just wanted to get cookies or a juice box or something, you could go there. So, Ms. Monterona, would you like to expand on like, what kind of food was served? <sighs> I don't remember. I know. My, yeah. my memory is spotty on the food as well. Yeah. See, I think it was similar. You know, I remember the pizza. Probably, I remember, you know, we had choices of cold or hot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, good question. Um, so, Ms. Murdoch, was there a, like, outdoor recess, uh, and what would you guys so. do during recess? I don't remember any recess, no. We, that I, was I don't remember how long lunch was either. I'm guessing it was longer than 22 minutes or 18 minutes. Mm. They, they probably gave us more time back then, but I don't know. Did recess stop in your elementary school? I think so, yep. Like, what grade was the So last I think recess? six was the last recess. Yep. Um, uh, so we have some more questions on like how the school was organized. So, Ms. Kropelka, um, who was the principal and like, when was he here? Or so I'm not sure, uh, his name was Mr. Mahoney. I'm not sure when he started, but he was here for both years that I was here. Um, the interesting thing that happened, for you too, mm -hmm. yeah. So the interesting thing that happened with my year is my eighth grade year, which was 1988, 89, was the last year that the Gibbs was open. Mm -hmm. So um, my class of students was the last year that went to the Gibbs Junior High. And then um, Mr. Mahoney retired and a man named Mr. Lamoureux, who was the principal when I first started working here, um, he was the principal at the Gibbs Junior High, and he came when they merged the two schools, he came here to become the principal. Uh, so was there assistant principals, or was it just one person? There was one assistant prin principal, his name was Mr. Fortunato. He was also here when I started working, 10 and years later. He was, was he there they, for you yep. too? So that again, that was back in the late '70s. So yeah. they were here that long. Mm. Yeah. Mr. Marnick, do you remember who you had as a principal? Yes, same ones. Mr. Mahoney, Mr. Fortunato, and um, Mr. Mahoney, who teaches here now, is the grandson of oh, right. the Mr. Yeah. Mahoney. So we have. So that was his grandfather, the teacher who's in seventh uh, grade. How many students would be in this typical? class and like what was your smallest class you can look at those class pictures in here and count them actually I think, I think it was pretty Probably similar 20 yeah yeah i do remember that the structure of the classroom though was a lot it was very um very s standard from room to room yeah. rows rows of desks not a lot of clusters of dust together really it was more strict with seating mm -hmm. Um, so, Ms. Kropelko, what did students often get in trouble for doing? Like, what were and what were the typical punishments for those students? Well, I never got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there were students that skipped classes. Um, I don't ever remember any fighting or anything like that, like major things. Um, I know there was a little area off the back. Um, 
softball field, or actually it's the front, um, up the stairs that they called the shoe, that kids would go and hang out, um, you know, before and after school, but I don't really remember. The shoe crew. The shoe crew, yeah. yeah. I don't remember kids getting in trouble. I don't really. remember what, right, but, I, but, I, but what they called it back then is demerits. So yeah. if yes, you right. had a, a violation of some sort, you got a demerit. So. Yeah, I wrote that. Oh, I had that too. Demerit and a detention. I got a demerit yeah. one time. Um, <laughs> poking the person in front of me, like we were at an assembly in the cafeteria, and I don't know if like a bag fell off or I, nothing bad, but just like something that I wasn't supposed to. I was just supposed to be sitting there watching the presentation, and and it was my favorite teacher that gave it to me, and I was so crushed. I was like, how do you? could you possibly do that? Who was it? Mr. Boswell. Oh. Like, he was just the greatest. And, um, you know, probably had to set an example that, like, you know what, you don't, you're misbehaving, you're supposed to be sitting here paying attention to the presentation, and I wasn't. I was goofing around, so. Um, so, Ms. Monterona, did schools have fire drills? Uh, and did anything ever scary happen? Miss Mernick could... I have one example. Oh, well, for that one, I have a couple. But I remember in being in seventh grade when the Challenger um, space shuttle exploded, and I was in sewing class. So I think this ties into one of your later classes questions about classes, uh, sewing or cooking. It was down the facts area, and they wheeled in these uh, TVs on carts so that we could all watch the aftermath. Guess of that, and I just remember that it wasn't here necessarily, but it was a big event in history and time that happened, and we were in seventh grade. Um, the other notable, I think, experience was when my older sisters were here. They're and they're a couple of years, a year older than you, maybe. There was a big walkout that the students staged. A walkout, so that all the students to just leave the school and refuse to come and protest and hmm. walk out of the building at the same time, because and this might have been. There was definitely a time when they were renovating the high school, right? That the ninth grade. Yep. So that when I was in doing? ninth grade, we were coming here yeah. to do our classes. Okay, so it might have been that year. So they had to shorten so at the high school they could only have enough room for maybe three grades right so the ninth grade was sent back here for a year and i have a feeling it was that year that they had learned about some asbestos being in the building asbestos asbestos um, unsafe fibers like in the uh, insulation so if you, it's it's not always harmful unless it gets you know, kind of airborne and loose and yes inhaled so I think there were a lot of uh, a lot of people wanting to you know state their case that they wanted some clean air to breathe in this building so and how did those events affect like the rest of the school day hmm. I don't know too much about that since that was my sister's uh, year but I think when there was like for instance the Challenger explosion or if there was some uh, big event I think it just made everybody come together in a strange way, you know, maybe it unified us a little bit. Um, so, Ms. Mernick, uh, what, what, was it hard to, like, earn high grades, or, like, and what happened when a student earned poor grades? <laughs> well, my, it de I guess it depends on your parents, right, how you got it treated at home for poor grades. Um, I don't know. I never got any sort of failing grades or anything. Um, but I think most kids and most of my friends too, if you had parents with high expectations of you to, to try to earn A's and B's. Um, and they used to have honor roll, remember? They did. They so posted if, it in the paper. Yeah, right? if you had all mm -hmm. A's and B's, you made honor roll and you got your name in the paper. Mm -hmm. um, if you had more A's than B's, then you made first honors. And if you had more B's than A's, then you made second honors. Uh, and Ms. Capelco, were there assemblies, and what would assemblies be like? What would they talk about? What would they do? Uh, I don't know. 
I mean, I'm sure there were assemblies. I can't mm. think of one that offhand that um, that I went to, you know, that sparks a memory. Mm. But we must have had them. Right? impactful. Yeah. I do remember since I got in trouble during that one assembly that it was in the cafeteria. So I guess they hadn't yeah. started using the gyms yet and setting up the chairs that way. Like we we do. Not that you know what that's like since we don't have assemblies <laughs> now because we can't be that close contact. <laughs> right? Uh, so. <laughs> Ms. Monterey, did Junior High West slash Odyssey have a sports team uh, in, like when you were here? We had intramurals, which was, you know, after school, like a club. Um, and we also had, um, just like Mr. Bartz, if, you know, Mr. Bartz has left his legacy. Um, he had hockey in the morning, he had um, softball. So similar to what what it has been, um, we did not have a team. We just, you know, had activities ex that were an extension of school. Um, so to spark other fun memories, I'd like to ask each of you to answer uh, these questions. So I'll start with the subject while at the us and your least favorite. Um, I think my favorite was probably social studies because I loved the teacher and we got to do a lot of coloring. Um, so, where was that? Um, Ms. Monterano, would you like to talk about your favorite subject? My favorite subject was also social studies and I had many of the same teachers, Mr. Boswell, Ms. Martinetti. Um, you know, I loved science. I think we had Mr. Uh, da, 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 da. Mr. Tobin. Yeah, I think he was I can't remember, history. He was history. Mm -hmm. History. Yeah. yeah. So I love social studies and history. Do you have any favorite memories from those teachers? Or? Just yeah. I mean, they left an impact because you know I remember them fondly. Um, Mr. You know, Bobley used to throw fun. Tootsie Rolls. Yeah, he, he was mm -hmm. fun. Uh, do you miss Republic? Fond memories. I can't think of anything in particular. Um, I just remember, like I remember enjoying all of my classes. You know, as I got older, I remember people saying, well, no one really remembers middle school because it's not the best time. Mm. And I always remembered all of my teachers' names um, and, and how much I enjoyed it here. It's probably why I became a middle school teacher. <laughs> um, not me, I ha actually had a terrible time here. My seventh grade year was one of the worst years of my life. <laughs> um, Teachers were okay, but I think with so much socially going on in my life, I wasn't as focused as I could have been. And my, I do remember my teachers being patient, but just had a lot of friend drama. And uh, it wasn't very pleasant. But, you know, I came back to teach seventh grade and <laughs> repay, I guess, for the rest of my life. <laughs> Pay it forward. Uh, did you participate in any extracurricular activities, clubs after school? Hmm. Besides getting bullied, um, <laughs> I was in student council. I was too. Yep. <laughs> we probably had a newspaper yep. or yeah. I don't know what they called it. Yeah. And I mostly did sports, and I don't think they had sports teams here, so it was like rec sports that we played in the gym. Mm -hmm. Forgot about student council. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So in junior high, do you remember having? Any painful memories, Ms. Propelco? Um, not really. I mean, I think the hardest part, and I think this speaks to what Ms. Murnick was saying a little bit, the hardest part about coming in here in seventh grade is, even though it was only four elementary schools, there was a lot of jockeying for who was going to be in what friend group. So, and that was really tough to navigate as a 12-year-old girl, you know, sure. and mm -hmm. try to figure out who your, what your new friend group is going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and what about you, Ms. So the question is, um, can any you, painful memories, bad experiences? No, I just, you know, one, one memory I have is that there were, you know, socially different groups, but we were really um, inclusive with everyone. It didn't matter if you are the, the jocks or the rats. Um, yeah, so we were overall a, a good, friendly class. Mm -hmm. So what about any positive or other just fun memories from the LSA? Hmm. I I mean, my memories when we were younger was also like what, what we did on weekends. Every Friday night we used to go ice skating. Mm -hmm. um, we used to go to the Boys and Girls Club for fun. 
Mm -hmm. We used to go to the Arlington Center, but the thing is, we walked everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, yep, walk up and down Mass Ave. And without a phone. Yep. <laughs> so, We'd use you couldn't phones. call people. Right. Yep. But free, so, free skate on Friday nights was a big one yeah. for middle school. Yeah. yeah. So, the biggest and most important question of all, what do you think made the artisan special? Let's start with this one. Hmm. I don't know. Um, I think I, I'd say by eighth grade, I found I found my friend match that helped me continue to navigate, and then I felt more, I guess, settled here. Um, and it was enough to then, you know, however many years later, make me accept a job here, and then decide to spend all of my adult years. Uh, and what about you? I, th I think what made Audison special um, back then is it really was a middle school before schools were called middle schools. So typical junior highs, um, they didn't have exploratory, you know, where you'd go and you'd learn cooking and sewing in a fax class and then you'd do music and then we had graphics, which actually that was one oh, of my favorite classes cool. with yes. Mr. Richardson. Yeah, I um, that too. So it was kind of behaving, having teams, you know, like 810s, 820s, like having those teams that was really a middle school mentality before we were actually ever a middle school and I think that mm -hmm. kind of it was way ahead of its time um, both the Gibbs and the Audison junior high um, were ahead of its time and and also like Miss Mernick I think my friend group I was just saying to these um, these guys before we started that my friends that I met here at the beginning of seventh grade I still talk to almost every day now uh, and Ms. I think you know what left an impact on me was that we got to choose. I'm pretty sure entering into middle school, you could choose, did you want to be in the open cluster or the closed cluster? So it gave us some ownership. Mm. And to be in a closed cluster, it was more traditional. You know, it was more structured. Whereas the open, you had to be able to learn, um, you know, with a lot of distractions. So, so they gave us some choice, which, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys sure. so much for coming here and we really appreciate hearing about the school. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. You guys did a great job.